the experimentum crucis during this period two women entered Jung's life both of whom were to play important roles in what followed the first was Maria Maltzer who had come to Switzerland from Holland and the second was Tony Wolf Maltzer's family owned the Bowles Liquor Company and she had become a nurse in protest of alcohol abuse. She had taken some courses at the University of Lucerne. Jung first mentioned her in a letter to Freud of September 8, 1910, relating that she was berating herself for painting too black a picture of Martha Bodinghaus, adding that between the two ladies there is naturally a loving jealousy over me. Maltzer became an analyst. In 1911, Jung gave a paper at a congress in Brussels on the psychoanalysis of children. As he was not working directly with children, he presented the case of a child analyzed by Maltzer, whom he described as his assistant. He reproduced this in the Theory of Psychoanalysis lectures presented at Fordham University the following year, which Maltzer co-translated with Eder, with Edith Eder. In an entry in his dream book in 1917, Jung noted the idea of Maria Maltzer that she inspired in me the libido work. Presumably a reference to the transformation and symbols of the libido. In 1912, in April of 1912, judging by a letter she sent to Freud on Jung's letterhead, Walter was dealing with his correspondence every other day in a secretarial capacity while he was away in Italy. According to Freud, Jung had an affair with Maltzer. When Jung wrote to Freud that, in contrast to Freud, he had been analyzed, Freud wrote to Sandor Ferenczi, the master that analyzed him could only have been Freudian Maltzer, and he is so foolish as to be proud of, his, of this work of a woman with whom he is having an affair. Whatever the nature of their relationship at this point in time, it is clear that it was close and significant. In an entry on, 19, on November 15, 1913, Jung's eyes said to his soul, I caught sight of a woman three years ago whose soul seemed to me more valuable than my, than my marital anxiety. I conquered my fear out of love for her. The woman in question was Tony Wolfe. Only a few fragments of her diaries from this period had surfaced. Regrettably, those spanning 1913 to 1924 have not survived, with the exception of some theoretical notes from 1916. The diaries from 1924 onward center around the trials and tribulations of her relationship with Jung. There are illuminating retrospective comments as well as entries from which one can extrapolate to some extent on the nature of their collaboration during this critical period. On September 20, 1910, at the age of 23, Tony Wolf was brought by her mother to see Jung. According to her sister Erna, he had successfully treated the son of a friend of her mother's, who consequently recommended Jung. According to Jung's pupils and biographer, the analyst Barbara Hanna, Tony Wolf was suffering from depression and disorientation, much accentuated by the death of her father. Her father had died the previous year. Much later, in an act of imagination with her father, on September 7th of 1937, Tony Wolf said to him, I became ill after your death, melancholic, completely unreal, and sunk in the inner world. Tony Wolf had audited courses at the University of Zurich on philosophy, literature, theology, and history, but was not formally enrolled there. 
According to Hannah, Young immediately realized that she needed a new goal to reawaken her interest in life. And so he put her to work doing some research for what eventually became transformations and symbols of the libido. She was stimulated by the material, which had a salutary effect on her depression and disorientation. Years later, she recalled walking in her youth near the Bergalzi with her parents and thinking, there would be a doctor who had significance for me. Perhaps I wanted to become crazy for that reason. Indeed, I ended up with Carl. I knew exactly what I wanted from him, relationships with genuine people. On August 29th of 1911, Jung mentioned in her Jung mentioned her in a letter to Freud as a new discovery of mine, a remarkable intellect with an excellent feeling for religion and philosophy. That autumn, he took her with Malter and his wife to the International Psychoanalytic Conference in Weimar. He diary, a diary entry from January 18, 1912 indicates that she attended a discussion session at Young's house in Kusnach. She noted that Young read from transformations and symbols of the libido and that the interpretation of the tree and the cross as mother symbols and the discussion of sacrifice and renunciation fully describes her own conflict conflict with her mother. She then cited lines from Faust describing the exhilaration of being lifted off the earth in a fiery, ch in a fiery chariot to new spheres of activity. She added that she had experienced this and now had to make it all come true. She was experiencing a sense of renewal and the opening up of new vistas. The entry continues. Eventually, Doctor deals with the sacrifice. Perhaps I must experience this for him. With mother and maybe also with him. I must experience it. That way I was always able to deliver him the problems that he had not thought of, thought through to the end. I lived them first with him, for him, then knowledge. Now it is conscious. Her references to the final chapter of Transformation and Symbols of the Libido. This passage indicates that she saw her work for Jung as not purely scholarly, but also ex ex existential, involving living through and experiencing something for him. This dimension was clearly significant for her. She further noted, I must come again much closer to Doctor. Inwardly, he is now far from me. At this point, she saw her contribution to this to his endeavor in the following way. I think that he has got a lot of symbols from me. I inspired it. The revision, I brought him a lot of it. He probably doesn't know that. She then noted that she herself had ended the analysis, adding that Jung had only fleetingly indicated the course and the sublimation, which she now had to find herself. In an entry on the following day, she noted that the work bound her to Jung, that a spiritual marriage had developed, but that she had to go further. In 1912, in November of 1912, Jung returned from his New York lectures. In a diary entry of December 29, 1924, Tony Wolf noted that 12 years before on Jung's return from America, she went to him and spoke of relation of relationship. In the November 15, 1913 entry in book two, following his account of the dream, around December 1912 of the dove that transformed itself into a small girl and then back into the dove, Jung noted, my decision was made. I had to give all my faith and trust to this woman. In March 1913, he went to America again for five weeks. Decades later, Tony Wolf noted in her diary, the feeling is somehow similar to 1913. When Carl went to America, we separated, and yet we couldn't do it afterward. This suggests a separation may have taken place at this time. On January 30, 1914, Tony Wolf and Mary Maltzer, 
Maria Molzer became lay members of the Zurich Psychoanalytic Society. The minutes noted that for two years they had intensively participated in the life of the society. Years later, Jung spoke to Anela Jaffe concerning the relationship with Tony Wolf. He said that he, had, he was faced with the problem of what to do with her after her analysis, which he said he had ended, despite feeling involved with her. A year later, he dreamed that they were together in the Alps in a valley of rocks and that he heard elves singing and that she was disappearing into a mountain which filled him with dread. After this, he wrote to her. He noted that after this dream, he knew that a relationship with her was unavoidable and that his life was in danger. On a later occasion while swimming, he found himself with a cramp and vowed that if it went away and he survived, he would give in to the relationship. In a diary entry of March 4, 1944, Tony Wolf referred to 31 years of relationship and 34 years of acquaintance. This confirms that her relationship with Young began sometime in 1913. To Anela Jaffe, Young recalled, at the beginning of her analysis, T.W. had the most incredible fantasies. A whole eruption of the wildest fantasies, some even of cosmic nature. But at that point, I was so preoccupied with my own material that I was scarcely able to take on hers. But her fantasies entered exactly into my line of thought. Concerning her attraction to Jung, toward the end of her life, Tony Wolf recalled that she had her first transference to Friedrich Schiller in 1905, and then to Goth, and then to Jung as a productive genius. In retrospect, she reflected on her analysis with Jung. When C begins to participate with my psychic material, perhaps I've got what I need, the nurturing and supporting substance. I suspect myself of having insufficient confidence in him because my analysis back then was intermingled with his problems, although it was also good for me. At the inception of their relationship, Tony Wolf was not interested in marriage and having children. She was critical of what she had observed of marriage. It seemed to make men less active and less enterprising, merely content with being fathers. It made both men and women less interested in culture. After having children, women often didn't, didn't need their husbands and their own problems tended to return. Her mother hadn't learned to work and had constantly plagued her children with unused libido. But Tony Wolf was also critical of the bondage of marriage. Emma Young came to accept the relationship between her husband and Tony Wolf. By all accounts, the triangular situation was not easy, but a respectful, modest vivendi was found. Young would have dinner with Wolf on Wednesdays at her home and she came to Kusnach on Sundays. In retrospect, Chung recalled the role that she played for him during the, this period that follows. T.W. was experiencing a similar stream of images I had evidently infected her, or was the trigger that stirred up her imagination. My fantasies and hers were in a participation mystique. It was like a common stream and a common task. Gradually, I became conscious and gradually, I became the center. And in the measure to which I attained those, these insights, she also found her center. But then she got stuck somewhere along the way. I remained too much the center that functioned for her. And therefore, I was never permitted to be other than what she wanted me to be or than she needed to have me be. At that time, she was entirely drawn to this terrible process in which I was involved, and she was just as helpless as I was. Tony Wolf's active imaginations during this period have not survived. However, her diaries from 1924 onward indicate that she clearly had a facility for this. 
Furthermore, there are instances that bear out Jung's comments concerning their fantasies being in a participation mystique. An important figure in Jung's fantasies was that of Ka from Egyptian mythology. Wolf had her own figure of Ka and also had dialogues with Jung's Ka. In an act of imagination, on January 11th, 1926, Wolf's eye had a dialogue with Toph, the Egyptian god of writing. Toph instructed her how to invoke someone's ka. So call loudly thrice, you ka, you ka, you ka of so and so. Come here and move into my heart. Space has been made for you. Your ba expects you and you should move in. She followed his instructions. Yuka, yuka, yuka of C. Yuka of Carl, come here, move into my heart. Space has been made for you. Your ba expects you and you should move in. On January 30, she noted earlier, Carl's ka to me mine not received by him. Carl's Ka speaks about the abyss and the death he sees. I want to let myself drop down. Such entries indicate a liminal imaginal permeability in which she would, would interact with some of Jung's figures. One may infer that similar imaginal exchanges took place in the critical period of 1913 onward. On several subsequent occasions, Tony Wolf referred to their relationship as an experimental crucis. As such, it was clearly linked to Jung's self-experimentation. At the same time, Emma Jung continued to play a central role in Jung's life. She ran the household, raised their children, and maintained the human dim dimension for him, while also facilitating and accompanying him in his self-experimentation. In 1910, she began an analysis with Jung, and she worked with Leo Hard Safe in 1911, and later with Hans Trub, who was married to Tony Wolf's sister, Suzanne. She played an active role in the Association for Analytical Psychology and later practiced analysis, also studying physics, mathematics, Greek, and Latin. The languages later enabled her, in contrast to Tony Wolf, to accompany Jung in his explorations into alchemy. She undertook her own research, which culminated in her work on the Grail legend. From around 1914, she began to do active imagination in the form of dialogues, paintings, and poems. In 